it kept muscle testing her and it, and it kept coming up a toxin problem. And so we lasered her and the next morning I get a call from her and she's like, hey, you know, I hope, I don't know if this is too much information, but I just went poop for the first time this morning. And all of a sudden there was this overwhelming smell of hair perm solution. And I was like, oh my God, she's got bone straight hair. And I was like, do you used to get perms or something? And she was like, Mike, I have not had a perm in 26 years. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We extracted that with light. Hello, I'm Dr. Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. On the show, we talk about everything related to heavy metal and chemical detoxification, health issues caused by toxins, and my other two passions, anti-aging and bioenergetics, and many, many other topics related to health. Today, we're talking to my friend, Dr. Michael Rakin Jr., and he's going to be talking about pain and how to eliminate and reduce pain. We talk about a lot of different tips and tricks if you've ever suffered from just minor pain or even chronic long-term pain, which you thought was intractable, then you need to listen to this show. There are so many, many tips and tricks on this show from using a device called an Equiscope, which I own, to red light therapy, to grounding, to PEMF or pulse electromagnetic fields. And we talk about a lot of different stories of healing and complete uh, elimination of pain, many, many stories that Dr. Michael Rankin has uh, in his clinic in St. Louis of uh, resolving pain. So listen up. Our guest today, Dr. Michael Rankin, got his start almost a decade ago working for his father, Dr. Michael Rankin Sr., running his cancer and chronic illness clinic. And that experience convinced him to get his own career change and work on his naturopathic doctor degree. And while working on that degree, he also spent about another 250 hours training with the esteemed Dr. Lee Cowden and the Academy of Comprehensive and Integrative Medicine. And his practice is very diverse, uh, but his focus is on chronic extreme pain. And he helps uh, with many illnesses with a combination of various therapies, including energy correction work, equiscope, red light therapies, lymphatic drainage, and laser detox, to name a few. And we'll talk about that on the show. His practice is in St. Louis, Missouri, but he sees people from all over the country, can see people remotely as well. And you can learn more about uh, Dr. Michael Rankin Jr. and his work at painfreelifellc.com. Michael, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so why don't you tell us about yourself and why you focused your, your health practice on pain? Uh, well, uh, about a little over eight years ago, I started helping out my dad with this clinic because I had the winter off and just asked me for some help and it stuck. And so after I started seeing, he deals a lot with cancer and very critical illnesses. And along with a lot of cancers comes a lot of pain. And so I saw him, you know, get rid of pain in so many different ways. And then when I started helping him, he started teaching me so much stuff. And uh, Dr. Norm Sheely is a very famous, well-known neurosurgeon and integrative medical doctor, uh, had created TENS units. And, you know, one of his, uh, he and I were friends when he passed away last year, unfortunately, but um he was telling me that when he got out of medical school and was thinking about, you know, other than neurosurgery, like where to focus, he decided that, you know, pain is something that's kind of universal. You know, there's there's no one in this life that will, uh, you know, get into get to and from life without having some kind of pain. And usually, um, you know, most people will not understand really significant pain in their lifetime, but lots of people do, myself included. And I know that when somebody is in a tremendous amount of pain, there's really nothing else that matters. You know, there's hardly anything else you can focus on. Um, there's nothing else you really want to do. You, you know, your social life, you know, takes a dive. Your family life takes a dive. You know, and I saw this great, I might have even sent this to you the other day. Uh, it was some little meme that popped up and I just thought it was so incredible. Uh, you know, you can have a thousand different problems, but if you don't have your health, then you only have one problem. Right. And that really, really struck home. But, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the way I saw it going into my own practice. When I decided after working with dad, it only took six months to realize that I wanted to make a massive career change from sales and do it into doing this. Because it turns out seeing like crazy miracles all the time is really fun. 
Yeah. So that's kind of where I decided to, you know, and there's, I mean, frankly, there's just a big market for it. I mean, we work with everything that comes into the office, of course, but over the last almost six years now that I've been doing this uh, in my own office and my own practice, that's kind of, that's the things that I like doing a lot. Um, and so I've just kind of become known for that. And so that's what I get a lot of in the office. Yeah. And so, and you're located in, in St. Louis, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, the thing with, when it comes to pain is that there's not a lot of options when you go to the conventional medical doctor, you're just kind of given pain pills. That certainly has been my case. Uh, I'd struggled for many, many years with lower back pain and it took so long for them to figure out what was going on. And it was just unbelievable to me. They just give you the pain pills to start out with. And uh, it, it just, I spent years and really, frankly, got addicted to to Vicodin um, for, a period, yeah, for a period of time because, you know, you just have the rebound pain if you don't take it and you can't function. Uh, forget working out. Um, but some people, they just, they just want to get through their day without having pain. And yeah. it's, it's going to be very traumatizing, uh, feeling pain all the time. People have health PTSD from it. And when they go to their doctor, it's ju it just really saddens me, just the almost near complete lack of options uh, yeah, when it comes it, to pain management. It is pretty insane. And I would say, I mean, because that's literally, and you know, God bless these doctors, a lot of them, because they don't really have a choice. You know, the, the, their training and uh, and schooling all told them that if this happens, you give them this pill. If this happens, you give them this pill. And that's literally all they're taught. You know, um, chiropractors, a lot of them can do a lot of work. But sometimes, you know, like even chiropractor or uh, uh, acupuncture, acupressure, things like that, they have helped a lot of people uh, and continue to do so. But most of the things that I see in my office are... You know, they, they've been through, I would say, a minimum of like 15, 20 doctors up to I've seen I have no kidding. I've seen people have gone through a hundred doctors over the course of several decades, you know, and they've tried everything because Western medicine, you know, they've blown through all those got no help. And, and frankly, a lot of times it would make them worse. Um, they've tried Indian medicine, Irish medicine, Chinese medicine, you name it. Um, and they just, they just can't get the help and they spent all their money. They spent all their family's money a lot of times. Um, so, you know, and it, and it's some of these people, I just, you know, it, it really pulls on the heart because, uh, they, you know, they've, I have had dozens, literally dozens of people share with me over the years that they're ready to end their life, you know, because the, something like trigeminal neuralgia, for instance, which is a facial nerve that runs up and through the neck and then kind of spider webs on both sides of the face. It is uh, known to be the most severe pain known to man. Uh, and it has the highest suicide rate for any disease out there on earth. Uh, so I, and I've got, I, you know, and I started off working with that in particular, um, just by chance, uh, there was a woman who came into my office probably within a few months of me opening the doors, um, who came in for some really serious, I mean, life threatening allergy uh, issues that we took care of with a laser detox and some other stuff. But after I was done with the one procedure that she came in for, um, right before I lasered her, I said, Hey, you know, we've got a, I got about 20 minutes before my next appointment comes in. Is there any kind of, uh, pain or anything that you want help with in your body? And I don't care where it is. I don't care what your doctor said. And her, and she literally, she said, well, I've got this thing called trigeminal neuralgia in my face that I've been keeping under control, you know, to keep it around a four level pain scale. Um, as opposed to like an eight or a nine, uh, sometimes it'll shoot up to a 10, but she was controlling that with like a hundred plus milligrams of cannabis, uh, oil every day, which, you know, I mean, if you know anything about taking that stuff, it'll knock you down. I mean, uh, and, uh, you can build up a tolerance fast, but you know, a hundred milligrams is enough to knock out like a 300 pound six foot five man, you know? Um, and it, it has still just kept it manageable for her to live her life. And she goes, well, there, she goes, I've got child gemmal neuralgia, but there's nothing you can do about that. You know? And I was like, well, I don't know. Let's, let's see. I mean, why don't you tell me about it? And so she did and told me about this fish. Cause frankly, I had never heard of it before as most people haven't, you know? Uh, and so I just said, well, let me, I got this equiscope here. Like let's, let's try. And I just took this little Y probe that has, uh, two ball probes on it, positive and negative. And I just 
work that area for maybe, I don't know, six minutes. And it was gone. And this event, this event with her for like four or five years, as I recall. Um, and then poof, literally in a matter of minutes, it was gone. And so we were just like, both of us were like, Oh, that's cool. And then, so one of her good friends had this. And then, so she sent her over and that took me another 15 minutes and it was gone. And I keep, I, I stay friends with the, some of the, a lot of these people I'll stay friends with and stay in contact with. And just as a practitioner, I will reach out to them and just kind of follow up and see how things are going. And, you know, um, so anyway, that stays gone. Um, uh, and then, you know, it's just, it's only referrals because I don't really do any advertising. I'll do interviews like this sometimes and, you know, but, and I'll post like te video testimonials and things that I do, uh, on Facebook, YouTube and stuff like that. But, um, mostly it's just word of mouth and like something like, for instance, again, trigeminal neuralgia. If you go on Facebook or any of these social media sites, you'll see that there's literally hundreds, if not thousands of these support groups for these people because it is just so severe. Like I had a woman tell me one time she had a three children naturally and she's a very small person. So it hurt. And uh, she told me she'd rather deliver a baby like 10 times a day for the rest of her life than have to deal with this trigeminal pain, you know? And so um, I just kind of, you know, work got out. And so I, I, you know, that the first woman I did spawned off like four or five other people. Um, and then I think an interview I did with you uh, a number of years ago, uh, I get calls from that. I still get calls from that. I had a lady come in from North Dakota last week and we were able to get rid of it where she was taking like opioids and dilaudid and just, oh, I mean, crazy, crazy stuff. They wanted to put her on a pain pump, but none of these, none of these drugs did anything for her. Like literally didn't put a single dent in it. And it did take me, frankly, uh, the longest that it take me with anyone so far. Um, I think by the longest that it take me was like 45 minutes for the first one. And that's just building up the energy, but, uh, to make sure it stays. But this lady was able to come in for a couple of days, just a couple hours a day. We were able to get it to zero after about four or five hours of work. And, um, she's good. And I did, you know, full disclosure, I did hear from her, I think yesterday or the day before that a little, a little bit had come back. And so I think we're going to end up doing some more work on that. But so far I've got like an 80% success rate with that. Yeah. But that's amazing because when you, when you think about how many years people live with chronic pain and they're told they just have to manage it, there's nothing they can do. There's no way to, you know, statistically, there's no cure or no way to resolve it which there is always a way, you know, yeah. you're just limited yes. by the person's toolkit that you're speaking to. That's and exactly so, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so tell us what this echoscope is exactly. So I have an echoscope. I use it to do facials. You did a <laughs> facial, you did a facial on me when I was in your office and I could not believe how much better my face looked after just one uh, treatment with this. Yeah. So that aside, so I bought one. For it, but I use it on my lower back too. Um, and then I did an interview with John Thorpe, who developed this, you know, over many, many years. And so that's a really interesting show to really figure out how it works. But why don't you tell us what the Equiscope is exactly and how it's able to produce these spectacular results in in completely resolving long term chronic pain? So that's a great question. Most uh, pain, in my opinion, and this is from experience, you know, because I, I believe, and you know, I'm not alone here, uh, that most pain and frankly, most disease, disease in the body comes from a lack of communication, right? If your body's not talking to itself, then the, that's where problems develop and inflammation in particular, of course, we all know, you know, uh, develops lack of blood flow, lack of oxygen flow, lack of electrical flow. And so those are the things that really will cause a lot of pain for people. So an aquascope is, in its simplest definition, is an energy correction device, an electrical correction device. So I'll place different probes and plates, and we do a lot of muscle testing to see which areas we should work on. Because sometimes it's not directly the area that hurts. Sometimes you like sciatic pain, for instance, people think is it's, you know, some kind of back problem or in your sciatic nerve or something like that. Well, so far I have a hundred percent success rate. That is no joke. I'm not exaggerating. I have yet to fail on, I don't know, it's probably been 40 or 50 different really serious sciatic cases. And every time what I end up doing is not right where it usually hurts, you know, in the lower back or butt area. Um, but if you work down that, if you follow the gallbladder line, 
where most people will stick their finger on the side of their butt. Hey, this is really kind of the epicenter of the pain. And then you work down that gallbladder line going down the leg. That's been my trick that has worked so far. Um, and, uh, you know, so basically you're just opening up those electrical lines, you know, um, and, and pain will like literally out of pain that has been there for 20, I had a lady with a headache for 40 years, all day, every single day of her life and like never had a break, you know? And as I was running this little six or seven minute protocol on her, we got to chatting a little bit. I said, you know, how many doctors do you think you've seen? And she was like, oh, please. I stopped counting years ago at probably around 80, you know, and we were able to get that headache of hers that would about a third of the time turn into a full blown migraine to keep her on from work. Uh, we got it down to zero. And for the first time in 40 years since she was like 10 years old, this woman is 50 years old, you know, um, and that was a one and done type situation. Like it never came back as far as I know, you know, and she know, knew very well to call me since I was the only one that had ever gotten it to go away. I assumed she would call me when she needed more help as most people will do. Um, so yeah, just correcting the electrical flow and cellular communication of the body is so, so crucial. And I found the Equiscope to really be um, just a gold mine for uh, taking care of that kind of thing. Yeah. And it was, originally was developed by John Thorpe to work on horses and to work on champion race horses. It's still used. He's actually, when I interviewed him, he was in Dubai and mm -hmm. he had this uh, working with some sheik that had all these cha champion race horses that he right. wants to win, giving that competitive edge. But it can work on on us as well. And oh, yeah. yeah, and it's it's it works. I've heard stories about how it works so well for the brain as well in dementia and oh, other sure. types of brain issues because you know we got to get that ele those electrical connections and the energy flow in the meridians to improve communication and get those synapses talking to each other. Can you talk a little about that? So, yeah, sure. I, um, I brain fog for sure. Although a lot of times I found that turned out to be a diet issue. You know, I get a lot of like vegans and vegetarians in my office who have brain fog at a very young age. I'm talking early twenties, mid twenties, early thirties, people that should not be having that. But when you cut out all the fats and amino acids and, uh, you know, high level proteins and uh, things that you just cannot get from a plant uh, or even from a good supplementation, your brain's going to struggle. Your brain eats cholesterol. That is its food. So like, for instance, you know, all these people are putting people on these cholesterol drugs, these statins or whatever that block the cholesterol uptake in your body. That's, that's catastrophic on the brain. So if you, so I've worked with, uh, not just headaches, of course, although I've, I've had a really good success with those and chronic migraines and things like that. Um, but I, one great example is, uh, a man that had come to see me when I think he was about 64, 65, but he had, he worked for Monsanto and won a, and they actually won a lawsuit, him and a, a group of people, because whenever they were exposed to in this particular chemical um, was causing early onset dementia and really fast acting and severe. You know, this guy, uh, for instance, when he came in to see me the first time, shook his hand, said hello, you know, people really advanced dementia. They don't talk very much, you know, so he just introduced himself and whatever. And I introduced myself, of course. And then so he came in and his wife was with him to do a lot of the talking for him. And because um, this had been, you know, this had him when he was like 51. And so we're about 12, 13 years in now. Um, and I said, uh, you know, so he we were talking for about five minutes and then he actually had to get up and go to the bathroom. Right. And the bathroom is just outside my office, about 15 feet. And so she walked into that door, waited and then brought him back. And he introduced himself to me again as if he was meeting me for the first time. And he was gone maybe four minutes. Right. And so we worked on him, I don't know, eight or 10 times, maybe less, uh, and then, and work on the brain, uh, earlobes, which will stimulate your brain, brain stem. And I've got brain maps to prove this, by the way. I did a series of before, eight, uh, eight maps before and after where I just did ear clips on the brain. And it was unbelievable what, what happened. I mean, the cleanup on the uh, overactivity, the underactivity, the lack of communication left and right was just staggering. And I actually sent it to um, a guy at Applied Neuroscience, a 30-year neuroscientist. And they've got like the largest brain mapping um, uh, library supposedly in the world. So you got a lot of comparative information there, which was great for when it comes to reading brain maps. <clears throat> so I sent it to him 
And I, I said, uh, hey, I just did these before and after brain maps. Can you take a look? I, I took some quick screenshots just to make it easy for him so he didn't have to pull it up and everything. And he went through and I, I sent him a text. I said, hey, man, I, I, I sent you a, a, a few screenshots of some brain maps I did. Would you please take a look at your earliest convenience? I'd love to know. We, we just got this Equiscope and I've been doing some work and I'd love to see what you think. Because we had been doing brain training for many years by that point, and it's it's a it's a good process. You can really get some good results from it, but boy, it is lengthy and expensive. You know, because you're going in 30, 40 hours over you know several months, couple times a week. Anyway, I sent it to him. He replied real quick, and he's like, "Hey, I don't have time right now. I'm really busy in the next few days, but I'll get back to you maybe Friday or something." I was like, "Great, no problem." About 20 minutes later, I get a phone or a text message. No, no, it was a phone call from him. And it, it, I could, you know, I could see his name popped up on the ID. So I pick it up and I go, Hey, Eamon, what's up? And I kid you not, this is exactly how this went down. I go, Hey, what's up, Eamon? He goes, uh, what the F is an equiscope? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even say F. And I was like, and he's a very conservative older fellow. And I never heard him talk like this before. And I spent many hours talking to him. And uh, he's like, wow, I, I, I don't know what to say. He's like, what? I don't, he just kept saying, I don't understand what you did, you know, because we did in about 15 minutes, what normally would take dozens of hours of regular brain training to do. Mm. And, and you're talking you know, about Dr. Daniel Amen, who. No, 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 no. Uh, Eamon is his first name. And I haven't spoken to him in years because he left the company, but uh, so I don't remember his last name. But he was the uh, CEO of Applied Neuroscience, who makes like one of the best brain mappers on earth. Sure. And so uh, doc, Dr. Bob Thatcher, that's his, he's kind of the, one of the big deal gurus uh, for brain training and brain mapping in the world. Uh -huh. um, so this is his equipment we use and why we had a relationship with that. So he was the one who taught me. So anyway, I, all that to say this, like we have seen unbelievable brain results. And this back to my example, of this older gentleman uh, from Monsanto, he, um, so after like four or five sessions, we, she was seeing some improvement. Um, he was like, uh, didn't have to ask her where everything was all the time. Um, he was able to hold conversations better. He wouldn't drift off after a few seconds as like usual. But one thing that I found really incredible, and this goes back to sometimes it's not working on the direct area. So the, the brain is represented all over the body, actually in the ear, it's in the eye. You can work on it in the hand, you can work on it in the feet. In the feet, it's the big toe is where the brain is represented in both your big toes, right? And so I just took a couple of plates and I stuck on his big toes and I worked on it for like an hour and they left. Uh, I, it was a day or two later, I get a call from his wife, who's obviously the one I'm communicating with the whole time. And she said, Mike, I don't know what to say. He just remembered what day it was for the first time in like 10 years. Yeah. And that was after an hour of working on his big toes to, to, you know, stimulate his brain. I thought that was truly remarkable. Oh, so wow. it's those kinds of things are really, really cool. Yeah. I feel like when I'm doing my facial, I'm also stimulating my brain at the same of time. Of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> and that thing spreads out for several inches in all directions. So yeah, yeah you're definitely doing that. Yeah. It's yeah. to me that you're out of, and I, we have another friend who, um, you know, they'll come in for one thing or another and, and then I'll say, oh, by the way, you know, and I don't do facials. I'm not an esthetician. I'm not licensed in that. I, I don't do facials in the office. Yeah, I'm just yeah. Well, you just did it on me. Yeah, yeah just you just did it on me. You're like, yeah, you were like, oh, hey, you know, you were working on me and you did my whole body. And you're like, hey, well, let's do your face. So just so you can yeah, see yeah. the results. And I was like, yeah. well, sure. I, I wasn't expecting that. But I looked in the mirror. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> And so you're oh, the what second, is this? <laughs> you're the second person. And this is like, I consider it to be a miracle medical device. Right. And it's, I mean, it's obviously mostly what it's used for, although there are a lot of estheticians that actually build a practice around it. So I did that for another person as well. You're now the second person that has bought like a $40,000 medical device <laughs> because the facials were so good. <laughs> but I remember reading an article of Gwyneth Paltrow and she was doing facials with these, these prongs. And, mm -hmm. and I realize now that the, that was an equiscope facial. And there's actually a lot of estheticians that use equiscopes in Los Angeles and other places because they get such great lymphatic drainage in the skin and, and yeah. muscle toning and things like that. Yeah, it's definitely good for lymphatic drainage. There's there's really nothing that I won't apply this to. You know, um, allergy, food allergies. One time I had a woman come in very young. And, and not kind of sickly looking, you know, she was probably 15 pounds underweight. You know, I could see her chest plate 
Um, and because she was down, she had whittled it down to like beef and broccoli were the only things that did not give her a severe gastric distress, you know, vomiting, diarrhea, severe cramping, all that stuff. And so for a year and a half, that's all she ate. And after a while, she got a little sick of it and wouldn't eat that much. So she came in actually for some neck pain, which we fixed right away. And I was like, you know, people are paying for, you know, 50 minute appointment. And, you know, I kind of throw them out the door after 10 minutes. I'm like, hey, so what else? Is there anything else you need some help with? And that, at that point, she told me about this allergy thing. And I said, well, you know, I, I don't really know. I mean, we can, you know, we can do laser detox, but she didn't have very much money. And I was kind of donating some time to her. And so uh, instead of going through a three hour laser detox procedure, I said, well, you know, let me just probe your belly really quick where your gut and your stomach and we'll see what happens, you know? And about a week later, I get a call from her and she's like, Hey, I don't know if this coincidence, but suddenly I could eat whatever I want. And I was like, Oh, that's great. And no, it's probably not a coincidence, you know? And interestingly, the next time I saw her months later for like a shoulder problem or something, uh, she was a little bit chubby, which I thought that was pretty funny. So for anyone listening that really wants to detox their body go to heavymetalsquiz.com. I created a quiz for you. It only takes a couple of seconds. Based on some lifestyle questions, you can get your toxicity score and get a free video series that answers all of your frequently asked questions about how to detox your body. Check it out, heavymetalsquiz.com. Well, it seems like, you know, it makes sense that for people that have impaired or slowed digestion, constipation, or even the gastroparesis of the wave of that we're going to see from ozempic use and whatnot right. people having their stomachs paralyzed this could hold hope for those people and just getting all that your whole digestive system firing and communicating the peristalsis going uh that can be lacking for various reasons like the because the vagus nerve is not tone i imagine it's, it's toning the vagus nerve for sure and that works on vagus nerve just countless times because that affects so much stuff in people it's really amazing um, but any of the, you know, nerve system, nerve pain, which when you, if you talk to Western medical doctors, they'll tell you nerve pain. There's, there's besides severing the nerve or doing some kind of block, there's almost no drug that affects a real serious nerve problem, you know, uh, but the equoscope and, and I've used a few other things for that as well. Um, is, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, I mean, I, I legitimately have, and this is probably on the conservative side, like an 85 to 90% can, uh, um, success rate with any of that kind of thing, any kind of pain. I don't care what your doctor said. I had a lady in, um, this is many years ago, 77 years old. And when she was 15, she got diagnosed with, um, uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis early onset, which is extremely rare, of course, but that's just, that's the diagnosis they gave her. And so for 61 years, this God bless her, man, she was a, a, a true, uh, trooper. You know, she had missed count like, like an average day for her was like a five out of 10 pain. And, but most days it'd creep up, you know, like, you know, in parts of the day to like an eight or nine, she missed countless weddings and birthdays and funerals and stuff like that. Cause she just couldn't leave the house. And a friend of hers recommended she come in to see me. And frankly, she didn't have much hope. She said that to me as I've heard that many, many times and it's okay. I, I kind of actually like it when I hear that. Uh, because when we have the success, I'm going to see a real smile in somebody, you know? So, um, and it, it took me almost an hour, not quite an hour. I literally timed it, um, it, because it was from neck to toe, you know, and basically any moving joint in her body had some serious pain. So I kept having to move the probes and plates around all over her body. And we got her to zero for the very first time in 61 years. And as far as I, I haven't spoken to her in probably a couple of years, and this is about four or five years ago. Um, and as far as I know, cause I still talk to her friend and she is still pain free. Yeah. That's amazing. It is pretty amazing. That's amazing. And all the doctors were doing was, and she was not one, she didn't want to live her life as a junkie, you know, which is yeah. basically, and I know that's a harsh term for people who are addicted to like, you know, they got into pain pills and addiction because it, and they came by honestly, because their doctor said, Hey, I don't know of anything else to do, but to give you these pills. And I know you're in like a nine out of 10 pain every day and you've lost your life, you know, your function in it, we're going to have to do this. And next thing you know, you're completely addicted to opioids, which we know is a massive epidemic in this country. So thank God we've, you know, come across other types of ways to do that. You know, I mean, you can, there's, I mean, a photon sound beam, you know, when I, I had a skiing accident a couple of years ago, a pretty nasty one, I was doing probably 40, 50 miles an hour. 
I'm in, I'm in, I'm in very, I'm in this game for 40 years, you know, since I was a little child, I'm a double black skier. And I, um, you know, was flying down the mountain. It wasn't this, this visual conditions aren't too bad. I took a real bad tumble. I broke four ribs. I cracked my hip in a couple of places and I've got x-rays to prove all this stuff, CT scans, everything. Uh, and my dad, God bless him. I, my friend drove me back because obviously I was, I couldn't drive. She drove the whole 14 hour away. We got home at like one o'clock in the morning. My dad was here. He had basically a clinic set up in my bedroom. And so I was laying on a PDMF mat, sandwiched in between that, a five foot on analyzer mat. And then I had a, uh, when I wasn't using one of those, cause you can't use them simultaneously because you'll get electrocuted, like shocked, you know? Uh, so I had a sound beam on me for like six, seven hours a day. Uh, 19. And so that really dramatically reduced the pain. I mean, I couldn't get up to pee by myself. I, I couldn't, I was bedridden basically for like four or five days. And after that, I could finally start to get up again. I was, thank God, finally able to take a shower. <laughs> uh, and then, um, within a week and I, again, I got this on video cause I didn't, I, I was documenting this cause I didn't think anybody would believe it, you know? And, uh, so I went out to my dad's cause he had to do some work. And, uh, seven days later I was up moving around on my own. And then about two weeks later, I decided I needed to get some x-rays because I, the pain's almost gone. The mobility was still a little, you know, sketchy on the hip. Uh, but a friend of mine is a chiropractor for like 25 years and has an x-ray machine. So I went to see him because he was going to do some free pictures for me. And so we took pictures. This is back exactly 19 days after the accident. And we could not even find. So he took like four or five different shots in my hip and my, and my rib area, right? He could not even find where the seam, because my ribs were separate. I, when I was moving around the first few days, I could hear them crunching, right? Because they were completely separated. So they were banging around on one another, right? You could hear it. People outside my own body could hear this from a few feet away. It was kind of troubling. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we um, uh, he when he's looking at these x-rays, it, it, and we're both looking at them, right? On this, on the, you know, the little light screen that he has. And he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Like at one point he said to me, are you sure it's the left side? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And uh, so anyway, we couldn't find when a bone goes back together. It's a very high energy point, right? When it knits back together. So there's a seam. Usually within, you know, a week or so of when the bone has gone back together, that seam is still visible. And we could not even find a single seam on my hip or any of my ribs which means they had been healed probably for more than a week at that point, you know, and the doctors, when I was in the emergency room and I did go to the emergency room because I found out through some urgent care x-rays that I had a pneumothorax, which is an air pocket in your chest cavity. When you get hit hard enough, it pushes because your lungs are sacs, but they're porous. So it pushes air out into your chest cavity, which can be fatal. And I had actually a bubble right here in my neck. It was really interesting. So I had to go to the emergency room for that, but long story short, they said, yeah, it's going to be about three months, you know, before you're healed up, blah, blah, blah. And it literally took me just over a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So that's what the body can do if you apply like electricity to it, you know, and I'm not telling people to go electrocute themselves. You obviously need to do this on the control conditions with control devices and know how to use them. So there's a amazing results with, with healing bones, with relieving pain in joints, I mean, the echoscope, I mean, what can it not do? I mean, there's just, there's so many applications. Yeah, I have, I literally there, and I've got a half a dozen different devices, you know, in my office um, that are all very effective in their own right. But if somebody comes in with pain or kind of almost anything at this point, you know, because I used to, if it wasn't a pain issue, I'd start off with something else, you know, maybe a mineral cascade on a PEMF mat or a biophoton analyzer wrap or um, you know, a lymphatic therapy, which would work for various things, you know, but I'll be darned like the echoscope kind of is like a use it all, you know, it's kind of a fix it all, if you will. Um, so anyway, it's definitely one of my favorite tools for sure. At a clinical level, people can come in and see you and, and use an echoscope. It's not something, uh, that like the average person can buy and just start using. You'd have to be trained on how to use this and it has to you, be used correctly uh, yes. for it to work. Yes. Well, it, it, yes and no. Like one of the things I love about that device is, and I think there's like 350 of them now in the U S alone. Um, and I think like 80% of those are in private hands, 
where people have just bought them to because they got some help with one in an office somewhere and like, oh, I want one of these and they'll use it on their family members and stuff like that. Um, but on, and on horses, of course, and by the way, just to go back real quick, Equiscopes, along with its predecessors, the Accuscope and Myopost, they're all designed for humans or any living organism, really. They started using them, this version, even though the two prior versions and they're, they're very close in design. Um, the Equiscope just has a few other chips in it that the others don't. Um, but they, they started using it on horses because yes, John is really into horses and knows a lot of really high, uh, big deal horse trainers, race horses, because that's a big hobby of his. And so before it had, uh, FDA approval for humans, that's when they were using it on horses. And then of course it, it gained FDA approval for humans like it did the other two versions. So just to make sure it wasn't just made for horses, of course, but it, but I love working on animals. You know, I really do. I've worked on probably eight or 10 different horses. I've worked on a dozen dogs, you know, that I've had people bring into the office. And it's just really cool because animals, you know, unfortunately, some people need to be sick. You know, it's it's conscious or it's sometimes most of the time it's subconscious, you know, but it's filling a need for them. Maybe they're getting more attention. Maybe their spouse is, is being nicer to them or whatever it is. Uh, maybe they just don't want to get out and do life. You know, I mean, I've mean, seen it all. Um, but animals don't have that. You know, they're, they're just, they either get better or they don't, you know, and I, I don't think I've failed on an animal yet, you know, to at least have an improvement. They can't tell you, but, you know. Yeah, let's talk about arthritis because arthritis is something that causes so many people pain. And, and I think a lot of people just kind of resign to that that diagnosis, they're getting older and it just has to be sure. managed. So can you tell us some stories around arthritis? Well, I mean, my favorite one, I already told you with the older lady, you know, 61 years of all day, every day pain and gone in an hour and stayed gone. That's, that's pretty rough. I mean, I, even, I was freaked out about that one. You know, I, on her way out the door, she's literally in my doorway. I said, man, you know what? Wait a minute. Would you mind doing a video testimonial for me? Because I don't think anybody's going to believe this. Like I wouldn't, you know, um, but after that, cause that was my first arthritis person, you know, and I'm not treating arthritis. I don't treat any of these diseases in my office, just to be clear here for the uh, NIH. Um, but we, all we're doing is correcting energy flow in the body. We're bringing the body back into balance so it can in fact heal itself. Right. And so when you bring electrical flow back to joints, for instance, like knees and wrists and elbows and shoulders and ankles, I haven't really tra kept track of, of how many uh, arthritis people I've had. I know it's in the dozens. And most of the time I can get that pain to go away. And you can correct a lot of arthritis with diet, you know, um, grains, for instance, especially grains in this country, you know, they're just, they're so filled with so many toxins. It's outrageous. Uh, you know, so many of the countries on earth have banned this stuff, but not us, of course. Um, but if you correct your diet, you take the grains out, you take like the manufactured milk, you know, dairy products, things like that, inflammation uh, causers, then a lot of times that inflammation will go away. And so will their pain. I've gotten rid of it with uh, ice wave patches. You know, are you, I don't know if you're familiar with the life wave yeah. brand. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is a fantastic product. I cannot say enough good things about that. So I had some pain in my knee that two different doctors, I don't know if I've ever told you the story before, two different doctors, several years apart. Like I'd, I'd have insurance for a particular job or whatever. And so I go in and, you know, get the checkup and, oh, hey, by the way, doc, my knee hurts. And so they do some x-rays and I did an MRI one time. And they're like, yeah, either, you know, you, you might have a little bit of arthritis coming, but, you know, my knee, my knee had hurt for like 12 years. And at the time I was only 40, maybe 42. <clears throat> and um, so I, you know, both of these doctors told me the exact same thing. And I didn't tell the other one what the other one said. Right. I just because I wanted their fresh opinion. And they're like, yeah, it's bone on bone. You're you've probably got some arthritis building up there and blah, blah, blah. Just eventually you're gonna have to have knee surgery. And I was like, Well, okay. I just resided myself to that fact. This is well before I started doing this kind of work. My dad had happened to come into town when he lived in Texas and was visiting, and he had been working with these patches for several months and been telling me these crazy stories about it. And I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, I, I, I get, I don't, it's not like I don't believe him, but these are pretty outrageous stories. And again, way before I started doing this kind of work and seeing what I'm saying. So he sees me get up out of my chair and I winced a bit, you know, that day was like a six out of 10 pain, I would say. 
And if I leaned forward on it, it would have pushed it to like a nine. He goes, oh yeah, let's, let's patch it up. So he takes a couple patches out, puts one arm in the, one a few inches above it at 12 o'clock. And so I kid you not, it, within a matter of seconds, my knee pain went from like a six, seven to like a two. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. And so I got up and he's like, oh, we're not done. There, if there's still pain, though, let's keep going. We did a couple of other movements. I think within 45 seconds, we had found the right spot. My pain went to zero. I was literally hopping up and down on that knee. And a minute ago, if you had offered me a million dollars in cash to do that, I would have tried, but I would collapse in agonizing pain, right? And and that was one application. I think it was like seven, eight, nine years ago, maybe even. And it's literally never bothered me since. Like not even a hint it was going to come back. And they wanted to do, they wanted to replace my knee. Yeah. I've used those ice wave patches before too. Actually, I have some still and they're phenomenal. They're fantastic. I, I love those. I like super patches also. Um, uh, Superpatch.com has uh, ones for pain. They're called Freedom. Those okay. work fantastic as well. Lots of really interesting ways to, to use these simple things. And a, a lot of people do you go through these crazy knee and hip replacement surgeries uh, that can be totally avoided again because their doctor is limited in their toolkit when there's so many things that you can do to address pain very successfully. And, and even if it's bone on bone, like John Thorpe, who developed the Equiscope, was talking about how his knee was bone on bone. And oh, yeah. he was able to fix it completely with Equiscope, no surgery ever. His knee is still fine today. Well, his, his knee was obliterated. I mean, yeah. it was, he had fallen off like a two or three story building wrong because mm. he was a stuntman, you know, for the people who don't know that out there. And, uh, and it's just, it, it was crushed. You know, he was told he'd had to have a full knee replacement, whatever. And a year later, he did a triathlon, you know, and God bless him. The guy took that his finishing picture and brought it back around to the four different super duper well known surgeons and showed him that picture. You know, and, and several of them were like cursing at him. Basically, you're an idiot. You're you're an effing idiot. You're going to be crippled, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, the one doctor was like, hey, how'd you do that? You know, and he ended up working with that guy for a number of years down in Mexico. That was a really neat story. Yeah, but I've, I've probably stopped, uh, I don't know, 12, 15 people from having to get surgeries. I mean, there were literally, uh, I had a couple of guys who had their surgeries scheduled, right? And, and like a couple of weeks out. And just a friend of theirs or spouse or somebody talked to them into coming in, or maybe they saw a video or whatever, and they just came in kind of like, eh, I'm sure this won't work, but, you know, what do I have to lose? I'm about to go under the knife, you know? And, um, yeah, and poof, it's gone. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. I love seeing that stuff. Yeah, and people can have major complications with surgery. You know, once you open oh, up yeah. that synovial capsule, you know, yep. you can have all kinds of severe problems and nerves cut and all kinds of mistakes. I mean, yeah. and long recovery, you have to be very careful. The, it, surgery is probably one of the most dangerous things you can do to the human body. Not just the surgery itself, but, you know, um, the uh, anesthesia can get trapped in your body. You know, a friend of mine, dad died from that, went in for a routine uh, shoulder surgery, which actually worked. I mean, it, it helped his shoulder immensely, uh, but it stayed, the, some of that anesthesia got trapped in his body and put his stomach to sleep. And so he was not digesting food for over like 10 days. His stomach just getting bigger and bigger and it started to rot and ferment and gave him sepsis and he ended up dying. So surgeries are, are truly something that should be a very last resort. Yes. Yeah. After you have tried everything, surgery yeah. is absolutely last resort. And I think people can be very casual about it because of amazing surgical techniques. There's amazing doctors and surgeons out there, but... Yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff can go wrong. And so let's talk about fibromyalgia and RSD. So oh, sure. these, these are things that uh, is it's on the rise, fibromyalgia, which is just kind of random body pain where you just have pain here one day and pain here right. another day. It can just travel around your body and be totally debilitating. Um, yeah. Do you have any stories surrounding that? Yeah, I've got a lot of those. Um, but, you know, fibromyalgia has been so easy like those those stories don't stick with me you know um and i don't think i've done one in a while but yeah i've had i don't know 15 20 different come in and it oh you know what there's one i do remember and this is this is one of a dozen different diagnoses this woman has had 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 um 
she, I, I, this is another one of those. This has happened to me a couple of times now where I've seen some kind of really just heart wrenching uh, note that someone will put on Facebook and they're not, it's not like they're trying to, you know, like this one woman in particular, um, she was putting a note out, like she didn't think she was going to survive, you know, her, her pain would get so bad. These, these inflammatory responses for, and they would just not pop up. And this has been going on for seven or eight years. They misdiagnosed her with cancer at one point. They, they diagnosed her with arthritis. They diagnosed her with just countless, countless things. Cause she had seen probably 30 doctors, you know, over the course of eight years. Um, she came in and, and she was a friend. Like I didn't know her that well, but her husband was very good friends with my little brother and he had moved away. So I lost tra- touch with that group of people, but you know, Facebook friends or whatever. And I had seen this note and I was like, oh, she was basically saying goodbye to a bunch of her friends. Like I'm getting a little emotional thinking about it right now. Uh, cause she's such a dear woman, um, and a mother of four, you know, and she just was losing. She felt like she was losing her life. The pain would get so bad she'd lose motor function. You know, she she would try and speak and she'd sound like she was drunk or she'd have a stroke or something, you know. Um, so anyway, couldn't take care of her kids. She finally came in to see me. I had to ask her like two or three times. And then one time I see this note from her. I'm like, look, you have nothing to lose here. I have zero percent chance of hurting you, right? The drugs you're on cannot, I assure you, they're not doing any good. And they weren't. They weren't helping her. She was just on them, you know. So she came in. It took me about an hour and a half. And this woman came in and she's gorgeous, like, like model beautiful. She looked like she was 50 years old. She was probably only 35 at the time. She walked in, she was all hunched over. She was walking like someone who had all over body arthritis, right? Or fibromyalgia or whatever. I mean, they all kind of looked the same. And so she came like creeping in the office. And I just, I was like, we said hello for like 10 seconds. Mom, nice to see you. It's been a long time. Let's get to work. Cause I could see how much she was hurting. And so I did, I worked on her spine just directly. You know, she just laid down and I worked on her bare spine. Um, I think I worked on a couple shoulder joints. I think I worked on her hip joints. Uh, and then I worked on her brain for a little while. The, the total therapy was maybe an hour and a half. She popped off the table, immediately burst into tears because she had zero pain for the very first time in like eight years, at least I think it was, this is many years ago. So the details are a touch easy. Um, but yeah. And, uh, and she, I think she might've come back because she was having some stomach cramps and something unrelated. Like she was having some real bad period cramps or something, which we also took care of. Um, her hair stopped falling out. Like it was, it was just such an amazing turnaround. And this was like two months into me opening the office. So I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know? Um, and we're still friends today. Like we became very good friends and she is still great and good to go. I see these little videos of her out running around playing with her kids. And this is a good four or five years later. I wanted to give a word to one of our sponsors and thank them. I love Solaris by Activation Products. This is a product I've been using for almost seven years now. This is my go-to to to prevent colds, to deal with candida, parasites, rashes, skin rashes. It's amazing for, but this is my go-to product called Solaris by Activation Products. They also have a whole line of the best top-of-the-line products that I highly recommend to all of my patients, go check them out at activationproducts.com. That's amazing. Yeah, because I think, you know, some people they get in, they can get into an accident or or they develop uh, pain, uh, unremitting pain. And then the brain is just kind of get stuck in this loop where it can't get out of it, where it's perceiving all these pain signals. And then you're reinforcing that with your thoughts and your beliefs. The doctor says there's nothing you can do. There's no cure or whatever is going on. And fibromyalgia is kind of a garbage can term uh, for for pain syndromes and things the, like that. They can't explain. They have no explanation for it. And so that's their vision the hole. You know, yeah. that's where they just shove it into. Yeah. You know, and I think it's, people, it's really amazing. Yeah. And I think people need to be uh, careful when, you know, you get into that pain feedback loop. You know, it, you need to do something to kind of interrupt it where you're doing you're doing this intervention with the equoscope with the you know getting everything kind of the nerves communicating how they're supposed to be and then it's almost one of the ways that it works is you're kind of 
stopping that that feedback loop that's uh, giving you that sensation of pain. Yeah, that's right. Or the blockage, just there's no electrical flow going there at all, you know, which is why those patches work so well and the aquascope for that matter. You know, one thing, um, you know, because pain can come from all sorts of different places and, and reasons, right? There's a thousand ways out there to get and find yourself in pain. So when somebody comes to the office for a pain issue, for instance, or really for any other kind of health issue, my, my question has become the same. This happened very quickly. You know, was there an injury of some kind or some kind of toxin exposure that you know of, or did you just wake up and it started hurting one day, or you just woke up one day and, you know, your stomach was not digesting food properly or whatever. And if there's an injury, Okay, great. You you go after the specific area. You know, if my back if my back was injured, I had whiplash, I worked on the neck, whatever. You know, um, but if they say, "Oh, I just I went to bed, I was feeling fine, and the next morning I woke up and I could barely walk," well, that's probably. And if you weren't exposed to some kind of chemical, you know, issue or whatever, I any mean, other kind of toxin, it's likely an emotional issue. You know, which and that took me a long time to get my head around, but. The, the amount of problems, and, and it's been my experience, and again, I'm not a lone dove talking about this and on this this kind of thing. If it's not emotional, it's nutritional, or it's mechanical. You know, there's there's one of those three things is a problem uh, or a toxin issue. You know, I do a lot of detox stuff in the office because I work with a lot of, you know, injured people. Um, particular kids, like if I could just work on with the autistic kids, uh, the ADD kids all day, every day, that's like my favorite thing to do. Pain's really fun too, but to see a child who had something stolen from him from a lack of education on their parents' part, and they know it, they know it right away, you know? So sometimes it's harder to help a parent get over that, over that guilt than it is to fix the kid. Um, but I've had, you know, dozens of autistic kids come into my office and, you know, I'll, I'll do brain training with the Equiscope. Uh, I'll work on their belly a couple different ways to correct their diet. Um, but laser detox um, that Dr. Lee Cowden taught me and developed, um, that's one of those things that, oh my gosh, like sometimes I can't believe. So I think I've talked to you about this woman before, but the first person I ever did this on was literally allergic to all food according to skin and blood tests, right? And I did this, this procedure on her, that was it and sent her on her way. And she had a pretty serious herpes reaction. She did not feel too good for several days. Um, and, you know, uh, I, won't, I won't tell you what she told me about her bowel movements, but they were, they were pretty impressive, let's say. And, and, not, and she basically couldn't leave the toilet for like a day. But at the end of two weeks, I got a message from her, hey, and she didn't reach out to me for like two weeks. And, and I thought that was kind of rude, actually, because I donated it because it was the first time I had ever done it and wanted to get some practice in. And so I was like, well, I guess she's mad because it didn't work and I made her sick, you know? Uh, well, two weeks later, I think it was to the day I get that message from her on Facebook because we didn't even have each other's phone numbers, you know? Uh, and uh, she said, hey, I didn't want to jinx anything. I'm so sorry for being out of touch, but I can suddenly eat. This is a different one, by the way, than the one I was talking about before. She's like, suddenly I can eat whatever I want. Uh, I just went, she had severe asthma. Like it had actually ended her life one time. They revived her in the back of an ambulance. She would go through four to 10 heavy pens per month, right? Just to not die. And uh, she said, hey, I, you know, I just left the gym for the first time in 17 years where I didn't have to use an asthma inhaler like every five minutes, you know? So that was pretty impressive. So I, I then started, of course, I want to do this on everybody, right? Because we've all got toxins. I mean, we're, we're chock full of whether you think you are or not. You can't get away from it in life today. So I did this on a woman for migraine headaches. Like she would get eight to 10 every two weeks and they would keep her home from work. Sometimes they'd last a day. One of them lasted like three or four months. And that's when she finally came to see me after her friends pressuring her, right? So I, I first of all, we cut them in half. There was 48% of her days. We cut them in half with the equiscope in a matter of like, we tracked it over three weeks and she was, she's a nurse. She kept a really good track of like, triggers and then how often they came and what what might have been going on in her life when that happened and blah 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 um but the so a toxin problem i kept muscle testing her and it, and it kept coming up a toxin problem and so we lasered her and the next morning i get a call from her 
And she's like, hey, you know, I hope, I don't know if this is too much information, but I just went poop for the first time this morning. And all of a sudden, there was this overwhelming smell of hair perm solution. And I was like, oh my God, it's just that bone straight hair. And I was like, I do you do, do you used to get perms or something? And she was like, Mike, I have not had a perm in 26 years. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We extracted that with light. So it's a totally non-invasive process. We're shooting light, a laser light through a frequency file of, of, you know, that I scanned their body, figured out what I want to extract, output those frequencies into that, and then laser her body with it, right? Or anybody. Uh, I've done that with her. I did that with a, a friend of mine uh, who paints houses for a living. He had paint fumes coming out of him for like two days. Uh, a woman um, lived on a thousand acre ranch, a commercial farm where they had lots of cattle, pigs, and used glyphosate on their on their corn. So for like a day and a half, the chemical smell, the fertilizer smells coming out of her, and manure, right? Um, and I, I mean, I, I'm, I know I'm missing some, but probably 15, 20 times I've had people call me back. Because after the first time, I was like, hey, let me know if any smells come out of you, you know? So it's, I mean, it's, and you're doing it with light. How is that even what? <laughs> yeah, I know. Dr. Lee Cowden is such a genius. And you've done that that laser detox on me before. And yeah. uh, it's just a, such a simple, 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 simple process. And it's it's basically a bioenergetic detox. Yeah, essentially what you're doing. And this is developed by Dr. Lee Cowden. Yeah. And then he teaches that uh, has taught it for many years. Mm -hmm. um, in his school. What is his association? That you ACIM created? is Academy of Comprehensive Integrative Medicine. I think they, they've opened it up a little bit. You used to have to be a practitioner of some kind. You didn't have to be a medical doctor. Uh, you didn't even have to be a naturopathic doctor, but you had to be some kind of health practitioner because you, you know, the gap of the classes would get too big, you know, and he, he wanted to help downstream as many people as he could possibly help. Right. And so practitioners can pass that stuff along. Um, but I think, uh, you know, after COVID and, you know, their, their classes died down for a while. They, well, they didn't do them for like oh, about a year and a half, but they started finally doing them again. And I'm really excited about that because not Dr. Cotton, yes, is, I mean, he's easily one of the best doctors I've ever known, much less heard of. Um, and he's taught tens of thousands of doctors over the last 20 or 30 years, God bless him. And, but he's so, he's such a good man and such a good doctor and so well liked, um, and very generous with time. But he, that he gets like these world famous doctor. I mean, he's their doctor, most of these guys. And uh, I won't, I won't mention any names, but you know, just, I mean, if I did, you'd recognize, you'd, uh, most people would recognize these names, you know, um, so, you know, I, I learned a lot in school, the three years of school, of course, right? And I, I'm very glad I did that. I'm grateful for the school. Uh, and, uh, but the, the, the thing I got the most from that I use the most to actually heal people in my office are things I got from ACIM. So I'm just so unbelievably grateful for that friendship and relationship over the years. Yeah. And I met him. He came with uh, Dr. Mercola to a Nest Health training that I'd invited. Uh, Dr. Mercola to you after teaching him how to use the this My Health device, which is uh, an yeah. amazing device. And so I got to meet Dr. Lee Cowder and just very thankful for that. And, and Dr. Um, Dr. Fun note, Dr. Cowden is Dr. Mercola's doctor. Yeah, it's and his I, personal I can say doctor. that because he he talks about that publicly. So yes, you yeah, know, yeah, that's uh, why he wanted him to come to the training to you know, see what this Nest Health was was all about. And so they're both trained in that protocol as well. Um, and so let's talk about, so so we talked about some things you can do in your clinic if people come to visit you in St. Louis. So what about, let's talk about a couple other things for pain. So red light therapy, sure. therapy. So let's mm -hmm. start with red light because that's something that people can very easily access. That's something for that sure. I, I use on a regular basis. And like I sprained my wrist the other day. And I literally, um, I had given away all my red light pads because I'm, I'm always doing that. <laughs> I was giving things away or letting people borrow them. And so I didn't have one. So I sprained my wrist literally for a month. Um, I don't know why I didn't use my Equiscope on it or whatnot, but I just didn't. <laughs> I was about but, to but, ask. <laughs> because I thought it was going to heal. I just thought, oh, I just stopped for a few days. Uh, but then I got finally ordered another red light pad from Therisage. I like the Tri-Light by, by Therisage. Me too. And in two days, there, no more pain. <laughs> brought the inflammation brought the uh, inflammation down so quickly and i thought god i just uh i just 
ran around for a month with my wrist sprain, not being able to work out and do Pilates and lift weights. And it's just such a waste of time to walk around in pain when you don't have to be. You know, it's funny. I'll get lazy like that too. You know, like I pulled a muscle on a float trip on my calf, you know, because my friend rocked the canoe and I popped out and banged it. And I was like, oh, you know, it'll go away. The echoscope is in the office. I don't want to, you know, I don't have appointments for several days, uh, you know, whatever. And, and it just got worse and worse. And finally, after a week, I was like, all right, I guess I'll work on it. And of course, you know, I was able to get rid of it very quickly. I think it took me two tries. Yeah, I do that all the time. I just, I really don't know why. But, uh, but with like, say, like the red light. Um, so I have, I have a great different... red light one. Yes. Um, so about, you know, and there's a miss of building a house, right? And um, so, and I'm, I'm literally helping build it. So I'm on the construction site all the time. And I, the other day I was, this is like, this is like a month and a half, two months ago, I was uh, going up on a ladder to get a measurement for my main builder. And I looked down before I get up on this ladder and I looked down and there's a block of wood like this big and it's got three nails sticking perfectly up through it. Right. And it's, and it's laying on its back. So the nails are like this. And I looked down and I go, huh, I shouldn't really move that. Somebody's going to step on that. And I go up the ladder to get, get my measurement. I come back down and bam, I stepped on the nail like not 15 seconds later and it went in pretty good. And so, and like, you know, it didn't hurt that bad. It was only bleeding a little bit. It was a brand new nail. I just put it through this block of wood or somebody did like yesterday. Right. And so it wasn't rusted out or anything. And we were in the middle of doing something to, you know, where we needed three people. And I was like, Oh, I'll, you know, I'll go take care of it later. I'll do a foot bath and put some iodine and all that stuff. And, so about three hours later, boy, it really started to throb. So I quit for the day. I went over to my dad's place where he's, you know, because I was staying out of the farm. And um, and uh, I and so we're I'm doing all sorts of stuff on it. And man, oh man, I don't know if I nicked something like some kind of tendon in there or something. Um, but like Equiscope was helping some, um, the sound beam was helping some. But man, it was so small, and I was walking on the side of my foot for like two weeks. And finally, my dad gives me this little handheld red light thing that's like this big. And I'm just like, I'm like, it was another one of those. I'm like, come on, dad. I, you know, I've used all these other therapies on it. Like, I, I think it's just going to have to work its way through, you know? Um, and so, but I'm sitting there watching TV and I'm not doing anything. So I've got this thing sitting right next to me because I had pulled it out of my bag, my computer bag that I was still sitting where, you know, where I sit down. And I was like, ah. All right, I went and got an ace bandage and I just bandaged it to the bottom of the foot and I let it go for like an hour. The pain dropped in half, right? In half, just from this little red light. And it was not even, it's not like it's some expensive one. I think he probably paid a hundred bucks for it, if that. Um, and so I just focused on the red light over the next week or two. And I think that's, that's honestly probably 80% of what healed that. But you can use it. You can use it for facial stuff, like dad yeah. Loves I use it on my face. facial thing. Yeah. Yes, I use it on my dad face as well. That. Yeah, because uh, it, it just helps to you know increase collagen production, reduces inflammation, and yeah. that that when you have inflammation, you have pain. So yeah. anything that causes inflammation in your body, you're going to trigger pain. Anything that brings that inflammation down will eliminate the pain. So it's yeah. just very simple. And bring the body back into balance. And inflammation is kind of the root of all evil. You know, when you cut off oxygen and blood and electrical flow, nothing good can happen. Yeah, yeah. And then let's talk about PEMP. So this is a pulse electromagnetic field therapy, mm -hmm. and they they can come in the form of like little wraps you can put around your elbow, or uh -huh. you can get a whole pad, and those have uh, really can cut people's pain immediately For uh, sure. when they're sitting on these pads. Can you talk about that? Yeah, lots of people have great, great success with those kinds of things. I will use them for, uh, and Dad actually figured this out. For those out there that don't know, my father is also a naturopath and been doing it a lot longer than me. Um, but so he's got, you know, just a, a couple of decades more experience than I do. So he's always coming up with these little, hey, let's try this and let's do that sort of thing. Um, and uh, he had done a sonogram on himself. Uh, and they're great. Like if, if people aren't familiar, there's a guy, I think he comes out of New York that we use uh, to do these things. So we'll stack up a few patients. They'll fly in for like four or five people. It's great. 
but he'll check organs, you know, look for tumors, anything in your, you know, uh, thoracic cavity. They'll check your heart out, check your lungs out. Um, and he's got something, uh, he's got some kind of uh, specific test where he does uh, for um, uh, arterial health and blockages, uh, blood clots, blockages, you know, cholesterol blockages, things like that. Um, and so his was a little bit high. You know, I mean, higher than he would like it to be. And he had no idea at the time because he doesn't go to Western medicine doctors ever. Unless, you know, I, first time and the only time I've ever seen him go to a doctor is when he broke his arm and it was like, you know, dangling. Um, so anyway, uh, this, doc, this this man had told him this and he's like, oh, OK. So he started and this guy was coming back like every six weeks. Right. Into so that's clinic in Texas. And um uh, so he was doing, uh, he was laying on a, uh, a PMF mat and doing mineral cascades. He would start off with, I think, uh, calcium, potassium, magnesium, uh, and iron, I believe was the other one, but, and he does them in a specific order. And, um, this is uh, recommended to him by the guy who sells these mats and also works a lot with minerals. You know, people, one of the things most people are low on are minerals. And that's really because they're breeding it out of the food, which is very unfortunate because that's a huge, huge issue, but that's a long topic for another time. So anyway, he was doing these mineral cascades and it was taking like a half an hour and he was, he was very diligent about it. He was doing this five, six days a week, you know, for a good half an hour at a time. Uh, in between patients and stuff. So the guy came back uh, about six weeks later and there was a 70% improvement in six weeks. I think it was less than six weeks actually doing only those mineral cascades. That's the only adjustment he made. He did not change anything in his diet because my dad is a, a constant experimenter, right? He's constantly doing experiments to see, you know, help other people and himself. He's pretty convinced he's going to live to be like 140 years old. God, I hope so. Matt, your dad is, is Michael Rankin Sr., who I've had on the podcast many times as well. Yeah, yeah. He's he's amazing. I mean, he's truly, uh, you know, I've uh, a lot of doctors out there, all kinds, you know, not just medical doctors, but naturopaths and other kinds of practitioners too. And I will actually fall victim to this as well. We can get a little lazy, I feel like, you know, some, you know, you've got, you've got this box of tools and, you know, they work a lot of times, uh, most of the time, even if most of the time, you know, um, and so they kind of stick with that bag of tricks, not dad, like this guy, I, I kid you not, he is nonstop, like almost every single day when he's got a free moment, he's listened to some doctor talk he's never heard of, or some guy he respects and is listening, you know, whatever, or researching on his own. He's always looking for like the next new cool thing. I mean, he's quite a device freak. But, you know, he finds ones, he finds some that work. And if they don't work, then they go by the wayside. And that's that, you know, but he never stops looking. And I just, I respect that so much about him. He's awesome. I want to give thanks to one of our sponsors, Spooky to Ripe. I want you to join the revolution in wellness with Spooky2.com. This is the pinnacle of Ripe technology. Ripe was a technology that was developed over 100 years ago. And this is the Rife device that I've used for over five years for every imaginable health issue and symptom. And it was developed in 2013 by an international team of experts and Spooky2, it really is the epitome of innovation and versatility. Spooky2's mission is simple yet profound to empower everyone to reclaim their health and vitality. They tirelessly seek and develop practical, affordable, and effective alternative health devices because they believe that everyone deserves access to holistic health solutions. You can learn more about the future of energy medicine at Spooky2.com. Yeah, and yeah, and you guys, between the two of you, have three equoscopes, and you guys are using them all the time for, for yeah. so many different health issues. Yeah, and and so, but so for the PEMF mat. Um, you know, I think it's, it's working kind of in the same way where it's, it's feeding your body energy. It's charging yes. up the cell voltage, which for many yeah. people that are ill, they have low cell voltage right. and it just increases, uh, communication again. Well, so, so one of the, one of the reasons, and I'm guessing you probably know this, but for the people out there that don't, um, we as a society, and there's books, dozen books written on this that, you know, we don't get grounded anymore. Like rubber-soled shoes are basically one of the more catastrophic 
uh, damaging things to the human body because we don't get grounded. You know, it used to be back in the day, you were walking around barefoot all the time or you had leather sole shoes, you know, which don't block that connection to the earth's energy, which it very much readably has. So your body, and I just saw, this is so cool. I saw this uh, video this guy did. He kept it really short and sweet. He had these two older women in his office, right? And cellular, like we talked about before, cellular communication is absolutely crucial for the bodies to, to body to maintain regular health, right? And when you get, and they should be round and bumping off each other and no clumps and stuff like that, right? So they can talk to one another and they've got their little antennas up. Well, they can, you know, they can get damaged by a number of reasons, you know, diet, obviously, um, injuries, of course. But if you're not grounding yourself, at least I would say once a day, every other day, even, you know, some people just, and it's literally, it only takes, so it only takes a few minutes. And I know this for sure, because this, this doctor is a medical doctor. He had taken some blood from two different women and they were older, like probably mid sixties or so it looked to me. And um, he took their blood and they looked at it and they threw it up on this big screen and he could see just on this little drop of blood that they had, there was so much clumping of the red blood cells. It was crazy. I mean, he had like 15, 20 over here, 10 over here, 30 over here. There was this massive space in between them, right? That's not what it's supposed to look like at all. But unfortunately, it does look like that in very many people. So he has these women go outside and he had, and it was like this big office building, right? And he literally videoed outside the window and see these ladies in their barefoot on just this little patch of grass, right? Because there was sidewalks everywhere. So they just stood on this little baby patch of grass, came back up like eight, 10 minutes later, and then he looks at their blood again. And now all of a sudden their blood looked like it should with these nice little bubbles popping around, bouncing off on each other, talking to each other. That was, that was pretty, I mean, I always knew that kind of thing was happening, but it was really much different to see it under a microscope. Yeah. And it's, it's so easy. So PMF, to, I'm sorry, yes. I didn't finish the thought. PMF yes. mats will static charge the body like that. And so it's basically like you're grounding yourself. Yes. Yeah. And just that alone can get people out of pain. For and, sure. And people it can be really taken aback by how quickly that works to get people out of pain, can regrow yeah. bone. If you have osteoporosis, people can have a, you know, single digit percent improvements in right. their, their bone density, lots and lots of different uh, health benefits, many. Yeah, it's super cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so we won't get into how it works and everything, but we wanted to just give you guys some tips at home that you can do to improve pain. And, you know, we won't get into super simplistic things, but um, with the red light, that's maybe like a starting point. Next step is the the pemp mat, and if you you still have issues, by all means, go see Dr. Michael Rinkin. And, hey, and you know what, Lisa, uh, Wendy? Just before we, because I, I think we're about to wind down here. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing because I I love these kinds of tricks that mm -hmm. are free for people to do at home. Mm -hmm. The grounding thing, obviously, is I, I cannot stress that enough. Five minutes a day, and go stand near a tree because it's got a lot more electricity under it because of the root system, right? Mm -hmm. The the tree huggers that that thing came from somewhere. Right? Yeah. But one thing I use quite a lot, and Dr. Jennifer Grameth taught me this. I think you know her too. Um, I had this cough one time. I had a mold exposure. And I go down to do some lymphatic training with her. And she was like, oh, that's kind of a nasty cough there. And I went down in there a day early because we're friends. I just wanted to see her and chat and watch her work for the day, you know, before the class got there the next day. And so she noticed this cough right away because it was every like three or four minutes, just this obnoxious cough. And it had been going off like 36 hours straight. I could, I could have hardly sleep. And, um, so she takes up this app and types in cough, right. For an acupuncture app. And we, you know, the lung line, obviously lung is going to be involved in a cough, right. And it runs, starts about right here and it runs down your arm into your thumb. And so she took just a simple laser. It's nothing fancy. It's not like some fancy medical laser, uh, probably 25 bucks on Amazon. It's the one I use. And, um, she did some like dime sized circles on uh over a couple of these different acupoints one up here and one or two down on the wrist and wendy i kid you not in like 90 seconds because she did each point like 30 seconds or so and bam i had no more cough i mean it was it was crazy so i started i was like oh my gosh I'm this i'm gonna start using i carry a laser with me wherever i go when i travel i keep one in the car i have two or three at the office um but so 
here's a great example for like, you can use, you literally, you can use it on anything and you don't have to have any app or anything. You just type into Google acupuncture point for blah, blah, blah. Right. So a friend of mine that I've known for 35 years, it was the with some sciatic pain. She came into my office, fixed it in like 10 minutes after she had spent $6,000 because she had never worked on her before. And this is, you know, I'd only had my practice open for a few months. And uh, so she had, was spending tons of money in like seven days. I think she spent six grand, got rid of her pain literally in less than 10 minutes, sent her out the door. About five or six months later, I get a call from her like 10 o'clock at night. She's like, Mike, you've got to get me in in the morning, please. Um, my pain is that, like all of a sudden today, she had gotten into a fight with her husband. And so it stimulated that, that gallbladder nerve. Gallbladder is uh, what traps uh, grudge in Chinese medicine, right? And so that emotion will block out that uh, that pathway, right? So I, you know, I'm obviously, neither one of us are going to my office 20 minutes away at 10 o'clock at night. So I said, I'll come in at 9 a.m. the next morning for you. But for tonight, I want you to take a laser pointer. She didn't have one. She sent her husband out to Walgreens and he got a cat toy, a little $10 cat toy, because that was the only, they didn't have like laser pointers or anything. And so I had her stimulate gallbladder 30 and then another couple, 31 and 34 and 40 down on her foot. And it went from like a nine to a, like a two, you know, so she was able to sleep through the night. She came in the next day and we got rid of it. So that, that laser pointer thing, again, for everybody out there, take any green or red. I prefer red for stimulating, um, but she can use green if you got one. So dime-sized circles around an acupuncture point. And again, you can just Google this up for, and see which which ones you know are appropriate and do that laser uh, point there. You can literally use that for any issue, and it costs you 15 to 20 bucks for a decent laser point. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, and I just want to get those... that out there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because yeah, free is great. And especially, you know, these laser pointers are like $10, $15. They're not, ex they're not expensive at all. You get them on Amazon or what have you. And it doesn't matter what brand they are or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, we love free stuff like that, free and easy. And just Google those those acupuncture points. And and also something I wanted to mention was estrogen deficiency for for myself going into menopause and I started having a lot of musculoskeletal issues after my estrogen dipped uh, significantly. And it really, um, I, it took me a couple of years to figure out why I was having so many pulled muscles, so much lower back pain again that I had kicked and resolved. And it was really just that low estrogen. And a lot of women can be diagnosed with pain syndromes and fibromyalgia and other things going on. So get your hormones tested as well. And highly recommend estrogen replacement therapy because you need that to make collagen that's going to help keep your your muscles and ligaments uh, more supple and, and moving and, and pain-free as well. And for the love of God, drink more water. Everyone, yes. drink <laughs> more least. water. Half your body weight in ounces of good water, not tap water. Add a quarter teaspoon of, you know, per liter of some good gray sea salt for minerals. Help you retain it more. Um, and yeah, cellular, any communication in the body, you are a walking ball of electricity. If you're not conductive, if you're not hydrated, nothing's going to work. right. Yeah. You need the minerals also from conductivity as well. So we gotta mm -hmm. have, gotta have the basics covered before yeah. we go to the more ad advanced stuff. Uh, sure. So Michael, thanks so much for coming on the show. So why don't, you, why don't you tell the listeners, uh, where they can get in contact with you, how they can get in touch with you and uh, come to your clinic? Do you work remotely? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, most people come to the clinic. I would say probably 70%, no kidding, is uh, from outside of Missouri where I live in St. Louis. Um, but I will travel, you know. Um, I do have some very wealthy or just lazy, you know, or people, not just lazy, but some people can't travel. You know, they're, they're just, they're homebound. And so, yes, I will travel to them. I've gone all over the, all over the country. I actually went to Spain uh, one time to work on somebody's brain injury. Um, but uh, remotely, uh, we can do bioresonance scans, like full body scans or about 50,000 points, give or take, um, to find out how your body's doing overall. Uh, it'll look for uh, organ health, uh, toxin levels and types. Um, just, you know, what, what are the, uh, causes and modalities, you know, that will, that are hindering you? Maybe it's an electromagnetic problem. Maybe your liver's not working right. Things like that. 
Um, I can do laser detox remotely. I've done that dozens and dozens of times remotely. You just need a friend to help you, but I send you everything you need. Um, emotional release work you can do remotely. Um, I send those people to dad. Um, what mm-hmm. else? I mean, yeah, I mean, you can, uh, for me personally, um, you know, it, for pain and things like that usually needs to be hands-on either they come here or I go there. Um, but you know, if it's an overall, just a, a health problem, a lot of times you can do stuff remotely. So, uh, you can find our website, uh, with a lot of information, uh, painfreelifellc.com. Um, and then, uh, my phone number is 314-899-9535. Again, that's 814, uh, 314-899-9535 and get you right to me. Um, I am working a lot. So if you just leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, you can go to, uh, if you want to watch, I've got probably I don't know, 25 plus uh, testimonials on my YouTube channel, um, Pain Free Life LLC. If you just Google that, it'll have a little blue uh, background with a little gray kind of figurine in, in the middle of it. So, and you'll see my face on these. Um, so I would highly suggest if anybody's thinking about coming in, go look at some of those testimonials because I started doing, I mean, they've turned out to be a nice marketing tool, but I, I didn't start doing it for that. I did it because I, I didn't think anybody would believe these things that I was able to do in the office, you know, because again, I, I'm a very, I'm just a skeptical person by nature, you know? Uh, so I seeing is believing. And so, uh, you know, either I found the best group of actors in the history of the world, or yeah. these people are telling a true story. <laughs> yeah. And I've been to your clinic as well. I've been there many, many times and always come out floating on a cloud, uh, oh. feeling really, really good after doing all the different, you know, all the different things that you do and your dad does as well. Uh, and Dr. Michael Rankin Jr. and senior. And so, uh, and your website is painfree, LLC, painfree, painfree life, painfreelifellc.com. Com. Okay, great. Yeah. So you guys can go there and check out all the testimonials and definitely contact Michael if you want to get out of pain for good. So Michael, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, everyone, I'm Dr. Wendy Myers. Thanks for tuning in every week to the Myers Detox podcast. And it, it's fantastic. Over the last two years, the show has been in the top 50 uh, spots uh, just ongoing. It's always in the top 50 of the alternative. Congratulations. Health. Yes, thank you. It's always been in the top 50 of the alternative health category. And it just really warms my heart because I love doing this. I love disseminating this information to people to help them give them those missing pieces of the puzzle and those clues that they're, you know, just not able to maybe find on their own to help them resolve their health issues because that's yeah. really. That's really, I love doing this. Uh, God to, bless to you, help. man. You, you get so many great people on. I've learned, I mean, I've listened to tons and tons of your work. And it's just, it's always kind of, it's one of those things uh, I'll just, you know, throw in in the car if I'm on a road trip or something and just see what I can learn that day. Yeah, that's it, that's so gratifying is I just, I love helping people and love educating people about ways that they can improve their health using alternative means that, you know, answers they're not getting at their doctors and they're so desperately seeking so so everyone thanks for tuning in and much much more to come i think we're we're getting close to up to 600 episodes already wow. it's just uh it's just really uh, amazing how it's just uh continued to grow and the audience has continued to, to uh, continue to grow so again thanks for tuning in and uh, a lot more to come the myers detox podcast is created and hosted by wendy myers This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Wendy Myers and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician. Thank you.